Attention Northwest Arkansas businesses and talent seekers. Introducing Onboard NWA.com, your hyperlocal job board crafted for our unique community. Struggling to find the perfect match for your job openings? Onboard NWA simplifies the hiring process, connecting you with the region's top talent through tailored talent matching solutions. Whether you're an employer seeking expertise or a professional looking for your next opportunity, Onboard NWA is here for you. Discover more at onboardnwa.com and let's build the future of Northwest Arkansas together. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I am here today with Giovanni Sarmiento. And uh, Giovanni is the Vice President and Community Engagement and Inclusion Officer for the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce. And the reason why I actually have Giovanni on this particular podcast today is because there's another individual that happens to just be a connector beyond reproach. And her name is Karen Wagaman. And I wanted to give Karen a shout out. Karen works with the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce as well. She is a colleague of Giovanni, but 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 Karen is just constantly introducing me to different amazing people in and around Northwest Arkansas. And so Giovanni is another person on a long list of people that Karen has personally introduced me to. And I appreciate that more than she will ever know. And the interesting thing about Karen is that I met her and I can't remember exactly how we met, but I went to one of the Arts on the Bricks programs in Rogers and then we met in person and I introduced her to my family. And, you know, she's introduced me to Kenya Christian, who was on a former episode of the podcast uh, talking about the 1619 Project. And she's introduced me to a bunch of people. So, For those of you that like this podcast and really enjoy the amazing guests, like my current guest, Giovanni, Karen Wagaman is is a a big person to thank in that process. As I say, it does take a village, and Karen is part of my village, and I really appreciate her. So big shout out to Karen. And uh, without further ado, I just want to introduce the I Am Northwest Arkansas tribe to Giovanni Sarmiento. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, great, great. I'm feeling wonderful to be here with you. Thank you, Randy, for this opportunity. <laughs> I also want to thank Karen for connecting us. I mean, you're absolutely right. She's an amazing person and a great connector. Yeah. She's so, so good and so well respected of what she does. And, you know, that's what makes this organization that I work for, the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce, a great organization because we have people like Karen. You know, we're, we're working day in and day out to, you know, do good and, and to better our community being through workforce or being through education, you know, healthcare, whatever it may be, you know, we're here to support our community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, as I think about it, the other cool thing about Karen is that it's not like she's been here for forever. She's not a lifer. She's only been here for a few years, but she's made the most of it. I think she came down from um, Kansas and she's, she has made the most of it and really made a tremendous impact. And I got to say that every time I interact with her, it's a real treat. So. You're absolutely right. But I want to learn a little bit more about you. You have a very interesting story. You wear many hats. And I'd like to talk about some of those different hats that you wear because it does play into what we're all about here on the podcast. I am Northwest Arkansas because our our focus, of course, is the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship and life in the Ozarks. And, And you actually dabble in a number of those different areas. But please tell the good listeners of the podcast your superhero origin story. How did you end up here in Northwest Arkansas? You know, that's a very, very interesting question. You know, I am a very, I'm a family man. You know, when I was sharing with you, uh, I have my wife. I support her 100%. 
um, as the same as, as she supports me. So we form a family. I have, a, I have two daughters. I have one that is uh, 15 years old and the other one just actually turned nine years old. So the way we got here to Northwest Arkansas, uh, it turned out to be a blessing because we came to uh, my wife's work. At the time, she was working for Ernst & Young, and she came to work for Walmart. In the years that she worked there, uh, Walmart actually proposed her to, to start working for the organization, and, and she transferred, and, and that's how we stayed here in the area. Uh, so like a lot of people, uh, Walmart is kind of the, the anchor for us, but at the same time, we have become to love this community, and, and we call Northwest Arkansas home. You know, we, we came back recently, a year ago, from an international assignment that my wife got to work for Walmart, so she, she worked for for Walmart Mexico, mm-hmm. uh, and from from Mexico, after two years, we went to Santiago, Chile. So we were, even though we were four years away, you know, we came back, and we always had in mind that we're going to come back to this to this region because, again, we feel like this is home. This is the place where we have uh, we have made great friends. We have a support system here, and life is great. You know, every time when I talk to people. That come from other parts and they have made Northwest Arkansas home. I think we all share the same the same sentiment. You know that we have a great a great quality of life. It's a great place to raise a family. There's plenty of opportunities here. If you're an entrepreneur or you know you're looking for career advancement, whatever the case may be, you know you're gonna find opportunity in this region. So it was the same thing for us when we came back. Uh, you know I I left the chamber. But as soon as I came back, I was able to get my, my job back. And that was a blessing on, on itself, you know, to come back to a community that not only supports you, but embraces you. And so I feel very lucky, very fortunate to go through all of this and to continue doing what I, what I love to do, Randy, which is helping our community. You know, we do a lot of stuff here at the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce, from education to, to healthcare to uh, you know, quality of life and employment and supporting entrepreneurs and, and, and growing business. So, you know, in all those aspects, there's a lot to go in. Sometimes, you know, we, we tend to, we tend to, to not realize that, you know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that go into making things happen here locally. And sometimes that's what, what the chamber does. You know, we are behind the scenes making a lot of things happen here in, in the region. Specifically, talking about you know employment opportunities when when we support businesses and we we support entrepreneurs get their ideas into into action and, and start their businesses, we are stimulating our economy. We are generating jobs, and that's what you know our our people need to support their families. So so that's very rewarding, and you know to be part of that, it's it's not only amazing, but it's also a blessing. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. And and you originally are from Ecuador, is that correct? Yes, Randy. I was born and raised in Ecuador. Uh, okay. Believe it or not, that's why my my very thick accent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I learned English at the age of eighteen. You know? Okay. So I'm a I'm a, a true example of that. That you know you can accomplish whatever you, you want to accomplish, even if it is a, at a later age. Uh, so. It was not easy to learn English. You know, I, I was an exchange student at the age of 18. I was, I was sent to Michigan here in the United States for one school year. And my Lord, it was so difficult to learn the language. But eventually I, I was able to do it. And, and I was, you know, I was able to start comprehending. And then I started speaking. But believe me, it took me almost four months to do that. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that kind of also gives me a perspective on, you know, our newcomers, uh, our I- immigrant community and what they go through, because I have gone through that. You know, I was not born and raised here. I had to go through the immigration system and go through all those hurdles because it's not easy. It takes it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of discipline to go through through the whole process. So that gives me another perspective, like I said, to understand exactly their struggles and, and what they're coming from and, and how to help them. So I'm very, very lucky, uh, lucky to work with a lot of those entrepreneurs that are, you know, like me, immigrants, and, and they're just, they just kind of dream, you know, when they moved here 
They wanted to accomplish big things and, and to be able to help them you know, turn their ideas into reality is, is, is amazing. We have many, many examples of very successful business owners here in the region that have turned you know, their ideas. And, and believe me, when they started their businesses, they didn't have much. You know? And now they have a very comfortable life. They, you know, they're looking after their families, educating their, their kids, and, and doing so great and employing so many people. So that's very, very, very good for our community. Yeah. So again, being, being a, an immigrant, you know, it comes also with, with different experiences, right? When I first came here it was in 2008, you know, not like many people, you know, we, we saw the transformation of this region. We saw how rapidly it was growing. By no means was I, you know, one of the pioneers. There's a lot of people that came before me, but I also saw how different it was and also, you know, the lack of diversity and, you know, so, so I went through some, through some situations where, you know, I didn't feel very, very much welcome here, but I took that as a challenge, you know, and I said, you know what, we need to do something about this. I'm one of those, those people, Randy, that is not going to just sit and complain. I, I said, you know, we, we're going to make this better. So that's where, where I put my passion and I started helping the community. Originally, when I moved here, I was in banking. I was in so I work here for Arvest Bank, and mm -hmm. through Arvest, I was able to to build, like always, you know, I'm a people person, so I build relationships just like you or Karen, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I love to make new friends, and and that led me to different opportunities, and, and that's how I landed into this role with the Chamber of Commerce, you know, and and again, I feel so fortunate because you know I'm I'm doing what I'm I'm passionate about. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. And as I was reading some of some of your words, I mean, these are direct quotes from you. You you kind of tapped into what you just said earlier and you you said something specifically and even you said that the US is a land of opportunity and you are truly free to go in any direction you want in your pursuit of happiness. But for many people who are not so fortunate to have the education or access to capital, healthcare or the language skills or the proper documentation, the American dream may take a lot longer to accomplish or may even take a generation or two. This American reality is what makes me, me being Giovanni, an advocate for equal opportunity for all and the respect for human life, regardless of our differences. And I think that, I mean, that just encapsulates what you've just shared and, and kind of what is probably, I would say, is the essence of your why in terms of why you do the things that you do. Would that be correct? That's absolutely right, Randy. You know, this, that's something that I, I truly live with, you know, and, and, and it's something that I also am passionate about because, you know, if it wasn't because we have different opportunities and, and that we start treating people with dignity and respect and, and, and giving everyone a chance to have the same opportunity, um, you know, we would be failing as a community, you know. So I saw that, like I told you, when I moved here, to me coming at the time, we were living with, with my family in Austin, Texas, and we also experienced um, the growth of Austin and, and all the great things that were happening in Austin and, and, and how fast it was growing. So that gave me some perspective when I came here to understand that, you know, this was almost like a clean slate, you know, where we needed to be supportive of this growth, that we needed to remind people, you know, that are either elected officials or, or people in power, that we can't forget, you know, that there are other groups of you know, people here that are working and, and thriving and, and raising their families. But we needed to pay attention to them. We needed to also accommodate some of the same opportunities so they, they don't feel like they're being left behind. So by all means, we're not a perfect community. I know that, Randy. I mean, I would be naive to tell you that we are a perfect community. There's still a lot of work to do, you know, but, but we are working towards that. We, every day that I come in into the office, that's basically my, my top priority, making sure that everyone feels appreciated, everyone feels like they have the same opportunity and the same, uh, same chance of being successful here in this region. Yeah. You know, and, and it's so funny as I'm listening to you talk and I can remember being a participant in a... Um, I think it was like a Rogers 2030 event that, that happened at uh, my children's school. This was before they started at the Arts Academy, but we met there with Ralph and several other people from the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce. And 
What I was really impressed by was the foresight that everybody has had to try to think about what do we want to see our community become, right? As opposed to just kind of, I mean, things don't just happen. Things happen when you plan for them properly. I mean, they can just happen, but then that's haphazard. And I would I would say that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Rogers is, is kind of taking the long game approach to how they want to see the community grow, how they want to encourage everyone in the community to continue to develop, to be the best contributor to that community. And so I think that, you know, looking at kind of the long term and not just what's right in front of you over the next two or three years, that's important. But looking, casting a vision that's that's bigger than just right where you are can really help to set up a community for long term success. And I feel like Rogers has an understanding of that. And, you know, you guys are going to be the one of the bellwethers for this this region in terms of community growth, in terms of community involvement by everyone, right? Because it shouldn't just be the same loud voices every time at the town hall, at the city, at the city council meetings, but everybody should play a role in that. And I I feel like you guys at the Rogers Lowell Chamber of Commerce are doing a lot to try to contribute to that vision. Absolutely. You know, I think you nailed it right there because we've been having this visioning process. So right now we're going through our 2030 visioning. So we're already planning for 2040, you know? So there's a lot of work, Brandy, you're absolutely right, that we need to do. And especially when we look forward to, you know, what what we want to do, how we want to be recognized, you know, and, and what opportunities we're going to present to our next gen- generation. And that's very challenging, you know, because, you know, we don't have all the answers. So that's why when we do this, this vision process, we invite, people from the community to come and, and talk to us, right? And we get the all the great ideas, you know, on what they expect, how they see their communities growing and, and, and what type of opportunities they're they're wanting to encounter in the community. So all of that information, you know, we take into consideration when we are planning for the future. You know, so for example, you know, we we have this this highway system, you know, in, in I forty nine it happened because of the visioning that we had, right? So we plan ahead, we needed we needed to have the better connectivity, and we made that happen, right? With the support of the community. So there's a lot that goes on, you know, when we, we do that process. There's many stakeholders that get involved. You know, we can't do everything, you know, we can claim that we, we made it all happen, but you know, there's legislation and legislators that need to be involved and and we have to gain their support. And especially for Rogers, you know, right now we're, we're experiencing this tremendous growth. We have all these, these great things going on. You know, every, everywhere you look at, no matter where you are in Rogers, you see a lot of things going on, a lot of construction, you know, more buildings and, and more roads being constructed or widened. And, and all of that is because, you know, we said, you know, this is where we are. You know, this is, you know, how our population is going to grow. We need better connectivity. We need more access. We need more hospitals. We need more schools. So all of that, you know, is part of that vision process. So, so we can, to your point, right? We can just cross our, our, our hands and, and think that all of this is going to happen organically. It's not, you know, we have to plan and we have to know exactly where we're going, right? So we are very active on that. You know, we, we've been very successful in that here in the region, you know, attracting, you know, all the retail opportunities that our city has been known for, one of the prime destinations for shopping. You know, we have the, this beautiful lake that we, you know, we, we try to take advantage of. And, you know, the amenities, we have now this nationwide recognition for being a cycling destination, you know, and that also didn't happen overnight. There was a lot of planning for that. So, Many great things that are happening, you know, uh, but I also have to mention this because it's very important because we have, you know, these very generous families in our, in our area, you know, the, the families that were pioneers and they have started these great businesses, but these are very generous families and they're giving back to, to our community and they're helping in every way they can, you know, they support many, many of the great things that are going on. They support great organizations, nonprofit organizations that are, that are fighting for, for many different 
in many different needs in the community, right? For example, one that I I also happen to to be fortunate to be on the board, the, the food bank, you know, we are trying to, especially right now with, with this situation with COVID-19, trying to make sure that everyone, everyone has uh, food on their table. And believe me, that's not an easy task. There's a lot of moving parts on, on that. So again, with this, uh, with the generosity of all these families and, and the community, you know, we, we make all of that happen. So I hope, Ronnie, that we continue to strengthen our community, that, you know, um, all the newcomers also start joining us on this. And, you know, they also have to understand how this community continues to be so prosperous and, and, and a great community to live in. But again, it's because of the generosity of many people, you know, and I hope I hope that becomes also something that people start seeing and and trying to copy, right? The newcomers uh, coming here and, 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 and collaborating and helping in any way they can. Yeah. You know, and I've said it, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times on this podcast. I, like you, I've been blown away by the level of, of philanthropic giving in this area. I mean, obviously, we, you know, we don't talk, I mean, we talk about it, but we don't, or we say, we say it in whisper tones, or, you know, it's just, you know, yeah, Walmart's in this back, in our backyard, J.B. Hunt's in our backyard, Tyson is in our backyard, and then so many other growing organizations are in our backyard that have individuals that are part of those entities that have been major benefactors for the Northwest Arkansas Corridor. And they have, whether they have sewn into Bentonville or sewn into Rogers or Springdale or Lowell or Fayetteville, you see some of the fruits of it. And we continue to see that fruit ripen and manifest itself on a regular basis. So I think that, you know, when I tell people, when they ask me, why, why should I come to Northwest Arkansas? I'm like, well, because I think we're on the the trending side of growth and opportunity and that we re- realize that what we're trying to create here is something new. It's not something old, but it's something new. And so with people like you, Giovanni, and others like Karen and so many others throughout this region that are that are trying to make Northwest Arkansas the best place to live on the map. I mean, it's 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 not it's not a surprise that we are slowly being recognized as a place to go as a destination of sorts, a place where you can raise your family, a place where you can start a career, a place where you can go and have adventure, a place where you can go ride a bike just about anywhere on any type of gravel or road or mountain, a place where you can really go to explore and find out a little bit more about yourself. And I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a commercial in, in and of itself in terms of what I just said, but but that's that's what I feel. I mean, that's what I have. Uh, you know, again, that's how I feel about Northwest Arkansas. I chanced upon this area, Giovanni. And, you know, you you know, I think, you know, we're, we're all here for a reason now. So I think the reason is that we need to all add our piece of it. You're doing it your way. I'm doing it my way. And, and so many others. Karen is doing it her way. We all need to add our piece to the tapestry that is this magic carpet of Northwest Arkansas that really makes it a great place. And And it's not. It's not that we're perfect. It's not that we have it all figured out. But I, I believe that there are more people here that want to figure things out than there are those that want to just keep things status quo. Would you agree with me? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, that you know, our community uh, continues to be a welcoming community. You know, we, we have all, all comers coming here from different parts of the nation, but also we have people coming from different parts of the world because, you know, our World-class businesses are, are hiring also uh, world-class talent. And that's what we, we want. We want to make sure that everyone that comes here encounters exactly what you just said, you know, a, a great community with lots of support, lots of stuff to do, a great place to raise their families and, and have fun, right? So we have opportunities. We have a great, a great community. But we also have to be, we have to be careful, right? Don't take things for granted. So, for example, another thing that, that we have done for the city of Rogers is uh, working very closely with the police department. And, you know, uh, right now in the national arena, you see a lot of the, the unrest and, and the protests happening because of the excessive use of force. Yeah. You know, and, and that's something that we plan ahead. Again, if we don't plan, if we don't envision what, what we want to become, you know, we could have easily been part of that. But I feel fortunate. Again, nothing is perfect. You know, I know that 
you know, the, the police departments are not perfect, but we've been working for so many uh, years right now trying to advance the, the way that we do policing here. So I am happy to tell you right now that Rogers Police Department under the direction of Chief Minor you know, they have taken so many great steps and not only making themselves available for criticism and answering any questions or concerns the community has, because we have created a program that, you know, we put all of the, the chief and his high staff to answer all the questions, you know, in a form from people in the community, people that want to come in and, and, you know, ask tough questions and, and get their, their answers directly from the source, right? Yeah. So, so that has created a basically a, an atmosphere of trust, you know, with the police department that we are enjoying right now. You know, through that program, we were able to lower the crime rate because now people are communicating with the police department and everything has to do with trust. You know, trust leads to communication, communication leads to, to a better community. So, you know, that's just one example of how we have uh, proactively been working to make this a, a better place, you know. Again, with everything that's going on in the national arena, we are not anywhere near, you know, those major problems that other communities are having. And also, you know, again, because of the leadership of the police department, we have been trying to mirror as much as we can, you know, the, the, the way that police, the police department looks and reflecting the community that is serving. So they've been actively looking and intentionally hiring people of color to serve on the police department. You know, so slowly we're making uh, progress and we're not quite there yet, but, you know, I'm happy to report that right now we have more than more than 12% of, of the department representing the community. So, yeah. so that, that compared to where we were 10 years ago, I mean, that's a tremendous, it's tremendous huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you couple that with some additional training in the areas of mental health and social work related things that certainly I think police officers need to have. And that that is a recipe for success in any community. And I, you know, I, I've been a long, I've been a big proponent of giving people the skills and the tools necessary to be successful. And when you don't give people the, t- the skills and the tools necessary to be successful, then it's a recipe for disaster. And yes. I think a lot of I think we have uh, unfortunately that has been borne out in a lot of communities around the country. And, you know, due to the death of George Floyd and a lot of the the social unrest that we're experiencing right now, along with the pandemic, it's caused people to wake up and say, you know what, we've got to start fixing some things and we need to bring everybody to the table so that we can do it collectively. And so that it's not just some one individual or two individuals or three individuals in a room by themselves making decisions. And I think, you know, Rogers is a prime example of inclusivity when it comes to creating a dialogue and putting it out there for everybody to be a part of. Absolutely. I mean, right now, you know, Randy, I can tell you a little more more about, you know, myself. And I am proud, you know, I'm not saying this because I want to elevate myself, right? But right now I am serving the the governor, Asa Hutchinson, appointed me to the advance of the the state of law enforcement task force that he created specifically for this, right? We we condemn, obviously we condemn what has happened to uh, George Floyd and the excessive use of force. That should have not happened, you know, and, and it should not happen in any community. So I, I am part of that, you know, and I'm going to take advantage of right now of your listeners and ask if, if anyone wants to, to talk about these and anyone has a desire to have their voices heard, uh, on this task force that I'm part of, just get get in touch with me. You know, you can you can find me. Go to rogerslowell.com. That's our website for the Chamber of Commerce, and um, you can find me there. Uh, send me an email or give me a call. You know, we can talk about it. I truly, I'm trying very hard really, to represent the people and represent the voices. I think that's my my job in everything that I do. I don't hold all the answers. I I don't have the magic wand to fix everything, right? But but I am making myself available to anyone that, that wants to talk about these issues and, and has great ideas on, on how to move forward. Yeah, no, and I and I, I appreciate you mentioning that. That was actually going to be my next question. I was going to say, hey, tell us about your new appointment with the governor, but you beat me to it. So thank you, <laughs> thank you for that, Giovanni. I appreciate that. And and, and certainly we, we wish you nothing but success and 
that there's something really good that comes out of this this panel of people that the that the governor has brought together, and and I understand that it's a it's a wide variety of people from all walks of life that are part of this, which I think is important. So certainly, I want to encourage our listeners to reach out to Giovanni. His his email is j is is uh, g e o v a n n y at Rogers Lowell dot com. That's all one word, RogersLowell.com. And his number in the office there is 479-619-3186. That is his number. And um, you can obviously go to the we- the website for Rogers Lowell Chamber of Commerce. It's www.rogerslowell.com. And we'll make sure we put all of this in the show notes so that you have a way to reach out to Giovanni. He's not just saying that to say it. He means it. Please reach out to him if you have questions. If you want to participate, if you want to provide your two cents, I think now more than ever before, everyone needs to feel empowered to kind of share their two cents. Because if you don't say something, then you can't complain later on when you see things happening that you don't really like and you never, you know, you didn't have a dog in the fight because you didn't put your two cents in there. So I think that that goes for everybody, myself included. We all have to have some type of involvement. And so just based on what you've heard today from Giovanni, I want to encourage our listeners to get involved the best way that you can. We don't really do politics here on the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast, but we do talk about issues and everything that Giovanni has talked about today, whether it's immigration, whether it's food insecurity, whether it's just proper representation in government locally. I think it's important. These are all important issues that everyone that is a part of Northwest Arkansas needs to be a part of. So I appreciate you, Giovanni, taking time to come on today. And and before we close out, I would love for you just to kind of share what you do. I know you have some children that are kind of along the ages of my kids, so you're probably out doing a number of different things. And it sounds like your wife is busy too, but when you have free time, what do you like to do here in Northwest Arkansas? (laughs) Uh, When I do have the time, yes, sir. So with my family, we love hiking. We love hiking, uh, mountain biking. My daughter is an avid rock climber, so you know, we, we go and, and do that with her. And something very, again, another blessing in my life, Randy, my little one, her name is Bibi, I, and I call her famous Bibi because she's more famous than me. <laughs> um, she, <laughs> she was born with Down syndrome. Okay. And, and that has taught me a lesson. You know, she is a bundle of joy, uh, very loving. She has a hard goal. She's very smart, just like her sister. So. We have learned so much, you know, and that's another aspect of diversity that I, I try to represent, you know, when I'm when I'm at the table sure. uh, in all these organizations that I participate. Believe me, I I have learned so much more than I can teach her about, you know, how wonderful these human beings are. So again, it's a it's a blessing. We are absolutely blessed to have her. Uh, she brings nothing but joy to our lives and. And her her best pastime, which you know, it also becomes ours, is swimming. She <laughs> loves she loves the water. Oh, that's uh, she great. loves swimming. So we take every opportunity to go canoeing with her, and we go to the lake, and you know, we go swimming. So again, here in Northwest Arkansas, you have limitless options. You know, uh, as far as what you can do, those are just a few that we we love to do uh, with my family. And we take every opportunity that we can to go and enjoy the nature. Um, yeah. But yeah, anyone that is, is listening to this podcast outside of, of Northwest Arkansas, if you come, you're going to visit, you're going to find a love, especially if you love nature, there is something for here for you to do, no matter what you like to do in the outdoors. My yep. gosh, we got plenty of opportunities for you to enjoy life here. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And now I'm going to put you on the spot again. What's your favorite restaurant here in, in the uh, in the Northwest Arkansas area? And you can mention more than one, but I'm sure you've got a go-to that you like to go to because people on this podcast like to eat, like myself. So I'd love to know where you, what place that you like to go to. Well, you know, me personally, I, I love tacos. So there is a, a local place here in Rogers called El Señor de los Tacos. Okay. Uh, very, very good uh, place to go and enjoy a taco. If you're looking for... Uh, good tamales and good tortillas, you know, you won't be disappointed if you go to La Popular, Tortilleria La Popular, they make the best tamales in town. And if you were asking this question 
my daughters, the first thing they, they mention is uh, sushi. So, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so we, we go and enjoy, you know, all the, the sushi that they can eat at their local favorite place, which is owned by a, a good friend of mine in, in downtown Bentonville, the owners of Lou. Um, Lou, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been so, I've been there. They they do have some really good sushi there. So yeah, the, the blue. I mean, I've always said the the two of the best sushi spots in Northwest Arkansas. You got Meiji down on the south side in Fayetteville, and then you've got Blue up north. And so yeah, it, it's and Blue flies it flies in a lot of fresh fish every week. So really really good sushi there. And, and uh, I'm much. I mean, yeah, that to me, you know, every time. Um, and Ali, the owner, is also from Ecuador. So we, you know. Oh, we, nice. We really good friends. So Okay. Well, um, I'll have to yeah, mention they, your name the next time I'm there. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> yeah, so. And, uh, and yeah, to your point, you know, they fly the fish every day. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, the freshness is, is, un, is unmatched here in Northwest Arkansas. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, man, that's great. I, I appreciate that. Those are some good places and we'll we'll be sure to put those in the show notes so people know where to where to check those out. And, and we all know how to reach out and connect with uh, you, Giovanni, if we want to reach out. So thank you so much for, for coming on the podcast today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for this opportunity. And I'm always at your service. Oh, man, that's great. And I look forward at some point in time in the near future for us to meet downtown at Onyx and grab some coffee and, and chat some more as we start to open up things. And, and we, we don't have to be as socially distant as we have to be right now. So because it's, it's, it's killing me that I can't be in the same room with you to have this interview. I mean, I just, I'm a very people person. I'm very people oriented. I like to connect with folks. So that's the one big thing that I am missing out on in this season of doing podcasting. I love the technology, but I miss the touch. And that's, that's the yes. hardest part. That is the hardest part. So we'll, we'll get an opportunity to go get for Go get a taco. Oh, absolutely. Oh, well, I will take you up on that, my friend. I will take you <laughs> up on that. So Giovanni Sarmiento, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We really appreciate you. Continue to do what you're doing to make, you know, Northwest Arkansas a special place and to imprint and be a difference maker here in the United States of America. Thank you so much. Thank you. You thank have you. a great day, sir. Hey, you too. Well, folks, there you have it. Another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. It was so good to get Giovanni on this podcast. I would love to hear your responses and let you, let me know what you thought about this particular episode. Again, we try to mix it up. We try to do different things and bring a lot of different engaging people on the show that can make you think, make you go, hmm, make you go, ah, wow, I didn't know that about Northwest Arkansas. And so each each time we bring a new guest on, our goal is to surprise you, is to impact you in a special way. So thanks for taking time out of your day to listen to this particular episode. As always, you can find I Am Northwest Arkansas wherever great podcasts can be found, especially Apple Podcasts. And uh, you can always write a review. You can let us know what you think about the podcast and uh, give us feedback. You can also visit us online at IamNorthwestArkansas.com and uh, leave a review, right? ask a question, whatever you want. And if, as always, you can reach me, Randy Wilburn, at Randy at IamNorthwestArkansas.com and I'll get back to you right away. Appreciate you guys so much. I hope you have a great day and we will see you next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.